What a week this has been, huh? OpenAI's QSTAR project, another Starship explosion, Pentagon projects, DARPA superplane, and a whole lot more stories from this week in this one video. I'm Nick, and we're about to get real. The scandal around OpenAI and Sam Altman just won't settle down, will it? It was given a new twist by Reuters, which received insider information from the company that says that several staff researchers wrote a letter to the board of directors warning them about a powerful discovery in the field of AI, which according to them could threaten mankind. Sources described the letter as the last straw for the board in a long list of grievances against Altman, which also included concerns about commercializing OpenAI advancements before understanding the implications of spreading such technologies. Upon receiving the information, Reuters seeked inquiries from OpenAI and the company naturally declined to comment. However, insiders immediately told the agency that after the request, employees received an internal message where Mira Murati allegedly confirmed the existence of QSTAR project. Some at OpenAI believe the project could be a breakthrough in the creation of general artificial intelligence. Immediately after the Reuters publication, OpenAI spokesperson Lindsay Held Bolton disassociated herself from QSTAR telling The Verge, quote, Mira told employees what the media reports were about, but did not comment on the accuracy of the information, end quote. Did this appease the media and the public? Not at all. Virtually everyone online, and even my grandma, are convinced that in their research, OpenAI employees have stumbled upon something that predicts the imminent emergence of general AI. And this something greatly encouraged Sam Altman and scared the board of directors so much that they tried to immediately fire Altman and stop this work. But no such luck, QSTAR won this round. So what's the scoop on QSTAR? We previously told you that the AI has learned to solve math problems like a human. Okay, and here's a few more deets. According to Reuters, the model has learned to solve math problems without training and at a level of an elementary school student, but that's not the point. Selecting answers to text queries, the generative AI relies on statistics and the answers may drift from each other. They may differ each time. Solving mathematical problems without errors brings AI closer to human intelligence and means its ability to generalize, learn, and understand. Researchers believe that math is the cutting edge of generative AI development. Broadly speaking, problem solving is the ability to distinguish truth from falsehood. This is exactly what has remained a fundamental barrier for current versions of GPT. It implies the ability to self-learn and self-develop on self-generated data. Is it true or not? We think that general AI is a cat in a bag, so we're waiting for new statements from Sam Altman, who managed to keep the position of OpenAI director, loyalty of the company's employees, and faith in the possibility of creating a common artificial intelligence for the benefit of all mankind. Moving on, SpaceX carried out their second test launch of the giant Starship rocket and even recognized it as a success, at least compared to the first launch. This time, the world's most powerful rocket did not destroy the launch pad and even performed a successful stage separation a few minutes after liftoff. The first stage then began its planned descent into the Gulf of Mexico, but instead of being brought down, it exploded mid-air. The second stage, namely the Starship spacecraft, climbed to an altitude of 91 miles, 148 kilometers, after which the control center lost contact with it. Immediately after the loss of communication, a self-destruct command was sent to the ship. Despite the tests going less than smoothly, the ship was still launched into space, the boundary for which is 62 miles or 100 kilometers. It also achieved near orbital speed of 15,000 miles or 24,000 kilometers per hour. We have to remember that after the first failure, although David Goggins would say after the first attempt, SpaceX changed the principle of stage separation and this time the process went perfectly. 
it's also worth adding that this time all 33 Raptor engines launched on the first stage of the rocket. Despite the relative success, the reasons for the explosion of the first stage and the loss of communication with the second one will be investigated under the control of the Federal Aviation Administration of the United States. The regulator's permission for the next flight depends on the outcome of that investigation. At the same time, Musk has already said that the next Starship will be fully ready for flight in three to four weeks. Even if SpaceX has not yet received authorization, the speed of the giant rockets coming off the assembly line is absolutely astounding. Talk about goals. More dates for you. U.S. Space Force top secret mission time is now out in the open. SpaceX's Falcon Heavy rocket will deliver the top secret X-37B space plane into orbit on December 7th. The launch is a part of the U.S. Space Force Mission 7. Interestingly, the X-37B is officially super secret, but in fact, it's so well known that the Space Force issued a press release about its upcoming launch and even revealed some of its cargo. The new mission, duration not disclosed, will travel to Earth's orbit to conduct experiments that the Space Force says will be related for future space awareness technologies and long-term effects of space radiation. This includes a NASA experiment called SEED-2, in which plant seeds are exposed to harsh radiation over an extended period of time. This is probably not an exhaustive list, but other experiments have been so far kept quiet. More from the U.S., Food and Drug Administration is recalling the Ascensus Surgical Senhance robot due to unintended movement. The problem involved uncontrolled movement of the laparoscope, causing the instrument to rotate after the surgeon removed the teleoperation option from the system. Although no actual harm was done and the robots designed with an emergency brake capability in case of such situations, the company's robots instantly lost the ability to operate. However, not for good, but only until the developers update the software on their devices. If you remember, in March, Senhance this year became the first and only system of digital laparoscopic surgery for children. Senhance features a 0.2 inch or 5 mm camera, haptic feedback, eye tracking camera control and 3D visualization. The system uses machine learning and augmented reality to assist surgeons during procedures. By the way, surgical robots have been actively developing lately, but it's extremely difficult for such systems to get permission for sale, and as we've come to find out, it's incredibly easy to lose it. A similar mishap occurred with the Cruise RoboTaxi. The company had its license for driverless rides revoked after hitting a pedestrian in San Francisco last month. If I didn't know any better, I'd say that the homeless are making their way back to the city after Xi Jinping's visit. Now, the General Motors subsidiary had to recall 950 of its robocars after admitting safety issues, including difficulty recognizing children. All of this could play into the hands of rival company Waymo. Their robo-taxis operate in California and out of state. Cruz's problems started early October after a pedestrian found himself on the way of the robo-taxi after being hit by a human driver. Cruz attempted to emergency brake it and pull to the side, but ended up dragging the pedestrian 20 feet or 7 meters before coming to a stop and pinning the victim's leg with its rear wheel. This prompted a federal investigation, and now the fate of Cruz and the return of its cars on the roads has a huge question mark in front of it. GM has already invested about $1.9 billion into Cruz as of September this year, and so far has earned nothing but reputational costs and potential sanctions. $1.9 billion, though, that'll work something out, I'm pretty sure. Terodynamics has developed a unique transwing drone that can autonomously land on a moving target. Its dihedral folding wings provide exceptional range and payload capacity. The transwing design is a transitional EVTOL glider with cruising flight capability. It changes shape between hover and cruising flight modes, making it one of the smartest airplanes in aviation. 
The company has built a number of prototypes. The current model is XP4 with a wingspan of 14 feet, 4 meters, and a payload of almost 15 pounds, 7 kilos, with a maximum takeoff weight of 83 pounds, which is 38 kilos. Also, top speed of 115 miles per hour, which is 185 kilometers per hour. The trans wing flies autonomously and lands, for example, on the back of a moving truck or a ship at sea. Its excellent range got the U.S. Navy interested in the trans wing as a ship-to-shore logistics platform, autonomously delivering cargo. Today, the drone exhibits a strong combination of compactness and wingspan, as well as speed, weight, wind resistance, and other characteristics. What a great thing to have if you happen to own a super yacht. What do you guys say? Engineers from EDH Zurich and MIT were able to 3D print a highly detailed robotic arm with a structure mimicking bones, ligaments, and tendons from different materials in a single go. It was all possible thanks to the Inkbit 3D system. This technology is called Vision Control Jetting, in which four high frame rate cameras and two lasers continuously scan the surface of the object to be printed. Based on the resulting data, a depth map of the object is created, which captures any imperfections in each layer as soon as it is applied. As the next layer is applied, the nozzle adjusts the flow rate to compensate for these imperfections, creating a smooth transition between layers. As a result, the slower drying mastics do so evenly without protrusions in form in the finished product. Therefore, all parts are printed in one go and require no post-processing. DARPA has named four finalists for its super airplane competition. The agency says the machine should fly at a speed of 460 miles per hour or 740 kilometers per hour at an altitude of three to five and a half miles, which is 4,500 to 9,000 meters, carry a load of almost 1,000 pounds, which is 450 kilos, and stay in the air for at least 90 minutes. It should also have the ability to take off and land vertically as well as hover in the air like a quadcopter. At the same time, the rapid design transconfiguration for different missions is much more important to the agency than whether the Sprint X-Plane will be controllable or autonomous. The finalists are to be awarded 15 million US dollars to develop this miracle. The money will be divided between Boeing's Aurora Flight Sciences Division, which has a sketch of the envisioned aircraft, Bell Textron, which is already working on a similar HSV tall project, Northrop Grumman, which has a couple of collaborative small aircraft projects, one with Jet Zero, the other with Scaled Composited, and finally, Pashechki Aircraft Corporation. Nothing is known about its developments in this area, but who else got their fingers crossed for these fine, upstanding finalists, which should have a working prototype no later than 2027? Google DeepMind has unveiled its advanced Lyria AI for music and song creation. The model is capable of generating high-quality vocals, lyrics, and music that mimics the performance style of popular artists. Experimenting with Lyria will be possible through two projects that are being launched on YouTube. The Dream Track experiment will, quote, help deepen musicians' connection with the audience, end quote, while Music AI will provide them with a set of creative tools. That being said, a limited number of users will be able to participate in DreamTrack. They will be allowed to create unique musical compositions in the style of popular artists who have volunteered to collaborate with Lyria in training. DeepMind will use Synth ID to watermark Lyria's music, and of course, there were talks that with such an AI, there's no need for musicians anymore. But every day we're reminded that any neural network is simply a tool in the hands of a talented person. To find out more about common fears and questions about AI, check out the video in the description. Now it's official. Fourier Intelligence has put the production of its GR1 humanoid robots on stream. What do you think of the spider robot? Notice its body covered in artificial skin. It breathes. It's equipped with a central neural controller based on a pattern generator to replicate breathing movements on the skin. What is that for? 
Researchers at the University of Southern Denmark decided that such breathable skin would increase the biomorphism of robots and human trust in them. Researchers believe that if the robot breathes, we will immediately be at ease to communicate with it and be sympathetic. I'm not entirely sure how I feel about this. What about you guys? Leave a comment below and tell me it'll all be fine. Or not. A team from IHMC Robotics has shown progress in their humanoid robot, Nadia. The engineers are currently working on an algorithm to step-by-step -step recovery when the robot loses its balance. It's looking pretty good, but it seems IHMC has a long way to go. South Korean company Naver has developed robots for automated data center maintenance. The Garo and Ciro bots work in pairs, complementing each other. The former is designed to transport equipment weighing up to 880 pounds, which is 400 kilos, at a speed of 6 feet per second, which is 2 meters per second. The robot moves autonomously, but if it notices a human in its vicinity, it will slow down. The second bot is for loading, unloading equipment and installation. The robot's accuracy is impressive. The deviation from the set position is in the range of less than 0.2 inches, which is 2 to 5 millimeters. And it can lift stuff up to a height of 10 feet, which is 3 meters. Over the last decades, the need for new data centers has been growing, which means that Garo and Ciro will definitely not be out of work anytime soon. Engineers from KimLab decided to try to equip the robot dog with not one, but two robotic arms at once. At the same time, they didn't develop a humanoid torso, but simply attached two arms to the body of the robot. The PAPRAS, which is plug-and-play robotic arm system manipulators, are KimLab's own development. The engineers were able to configure two PAPRAS systems so that they work in parallel. The developers report that they were able to perform movements with mobile devices as well as fulfill entertainment applications and human interaction. More news from the world of high tech here at Pro Robots. Like this video, share it, and subscribe. We also have a Telegram channel, check it out. Also, don't forget to look at the links in the description below for more videos. Until next time, bye bye.